Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 244 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. Don't say still. Short and sweet. No, no. <laughs> I had an edge to it, but I liked it. <laughs> My name is Barbara. Ooh. All right. Don't know why we have to introduce ourselves after all this time. Yeah. I hope I, you bleep that out. I will, of course. But yes, Good. you know how I roll. I like to say our names because yes. every episode we hope to get somebody new who's going to say, well, who the hell are these f***ers? And that's well, then I'm glad you told our audience that because they're probably like, my God, why don't they change that intro? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I can. I don't know if I have the ability. So, hey, we're recording this early. We're doing this before Thanksgiving. Well, there's coming. Yes, we are. One second. Let me grab the dog. One would think you would do that. I was going to grab her before, but I went to go get her, and she was, like, sound asleep. I was like, I'm not going to bother her. And then she... So, yeah, we're recording this before, and I said, hey, Barb, let's knock out this episode before you get on a plane and go to the Keys. And you told me, you're like, no, I'll bring my computer. And I said, no, 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 no. I am not going to interrupt your wonderful warm beach holiday oh yeah that's okay <laughs> shout out to joe hi joe from fans that was hilarious he's got me all ready to go in a snow buddy uniform to the keys but you know it is gonna happen joe and i will send you photographs so. yes and i knew you wouldn't find 10 minutes to record i knew it i know you <laughs> wouldn't and i and i, I imagine would've. yeah for you and for the voices i would have but thank you <laughs> thank you i appreciate it. i might have been drunk but uh, <laughs> we don't know what we had to get at that point. Uh, maybe we should have. <laughs> yeah. All right. So even though we're recording this before and it's coming out after, we hope all of our U.S. listeners had a great holiday weekend. You enjoyed your time off, and hopefully you didn't start this Monday with a ton of denture repairs from everyone breaking them while they're eating. Do they celebrate Thanksgiving in Canada? I don't know. Just wondering. Because you said U.S. listeners, so if there's anybody out there in Canada that you do Thanksgiving, shout out. You know, for anyone that just had a day off this week. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So this week, we are back in Louisville, showcasing conversation. Louisville. 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 This week, we're back in Louisville, showcasing (laughs) conversations we had (laughs) while at the Whitmix Digital Forum at the end of last October. He's trying to be serious, but I'm laughing. All right, go. You remember... Warmer days. Well, most of us. Yep. Well, I still have warm days, so. Shut up. <laughs> Anywho, this collection is a real treat because both contain a past guest from the podcast along with somebody new. First up is one of the first ladies from Ladies of the Mill, Jill Swafford. Jill joins us in her leather pants. Yeah, I was just going to say super cool leather pants, just saying. Woman. Along with her first employee ever, Erin Simmons. Jill updates us on how much she's grown since she was on the podcast and how bringing on Erin, who came on with zero experience in dental but with an amazing drive, has helped Jill scale up so she can soon hire her third employee. Yeah, they're pretty spectacular. Yeah. Jill also updates us on some early thoughts for the next Ladies of the Mill Summit, which we're already excited about, and Barb promises to attend. (laughs) Shout out to Barb. Thank you. I will. Third time's a charm. I hope so. I I know so. And then next, I was able to super nerd out. Oh, Lord. Totally. talk over dentures with past guest Todd Hyduck from Zest Dental Solutions. You know, that company that makes a locator? Oh, yeah, we do. Todd was there exhibiting, but he was also putting on a hands-on course with Dr. Michael Schur. Dr. Schur talks about his practice, his role with Zest, but the nerd talk starts to get Uh. deep when we get into Zest's new fix solution called the Locator Fixed. Todd also talks about Zest's new training facility that opens in early 2023, which sounds super exciting. Oh, yeah. So sit back and get ready for some great conversations that we had at the Whitmix Digital Forum with Jill Swafford 
Aaron Simmons, Todd Hyduck, and Dr. Michael Shearer. Two dynamic teams have joined forces to rock the intraoral scanning world. Whitmix has added the three-shape Trios line of scanners to its line of digital solutions for the dental office. Together, this dynamic duo can get your dentist scanning, providing you the reliable scans you need for your lab work. If you're interested in learning more about helping your dentist, head over to tinyurl.com slash Whitmix Trios. That's T-R-I-O-S. Again, that's the word tiny, URL.com slash Whitmix, T-R-I-O-S. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. The last guy that used that had a huge head. Yeah, he was massive, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a ginormous yeah. head. There we go. There you go. Both yep. physically you just can put and. It no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ones you can't really so <laughs> <laughs> We are here the last day of Whitmix Digital Forum 2022. We are joined by a good friend, Jill Swafford, speaker. You didn't exhibit here. Did you do a hands-on? Nope. Just spoke. Mm-hmm. And also joining her is her right-hand lady. That's it. Is that Aww. a good way of putting it? I don't know what I would do with little a- without Aaron Simmons. Aaron Simmons. I just don't know what I would do. So, <laughs> so Jill, last time we talked to you was right before the second Ladies, ladies of, the of the Mill or the first Ladies there of the Mill? Probably yeah, the it's first. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. So what's going on? I don't think you built your new lab yet. No, no. I had not spoke to you guys since we built it, and especially not since we moved in. We just moved in February of this year, 2022, and – I mean, that's been a game changer. Yeah. I mean, it's just so awesome to finally be in a space that we feel like we can grow in and that we're proud of mm-hmm. and that we're not sitting in each other's laps in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you actually have space now. Yes. And there's not a mill, like, right beside me and a compressor and a <laughs> printer and a computer. Like, everything was in just such the tight little room. You didn't have a counter space anywhere. Yeah. You know, and he, our main compressors that ran our mill were in that same little closet room with us. So that's a risk. So, like, how did you decide oh. that it's time? I need to move. I need to build. You know, honestly, everything always circles back to my kids. I mean, I, every every decision I feel like always circles back to that. And so I had the lab so that I could be home with the kids when necessary through summer and, you know, all those things. But I found myself in the lab without being able to see my kids inside the house. And all I could imagine was them constantly on top of the counters with knobs or, (laughs) you know, like, and so it's like, we did this thing, but it's not accomplishing the goal. And, you know, so outside of that, we just got to a point of growth, you know, where it was like, okay, we want to be able to bring doctors in and help train, or we want to be able to host, you know, stuff at the lab. And we just did not have a presence to do that. You know, we were literally in my husband's man cave, yeah. you know, on our property, and it was just, that just wasn't it working. It was just time. So, you know, natural organic growth, but one that we were ready for. Awesome. Good so to when did you bring Aaron in? When you were still in the little room? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we were still in the little room, and I didn't think I had room for myself in the little room, much less bringing on another person full-time with me. So how, did you, how did you guys connect? Through church. We met at church. Okay. And I was actually working another job that I had been at for 19 years. Dental? Wow. No. No. <laughs> pediatric nurse. Oh, my God. And <laughs> Jill come into church one day and said, hey, I need prayer. I'm fixing to hire my first time full-time employee. And I sent her an email with my resume, and I said, I'm just putting this out there. Aw. I was like, what in the world? I and need this girl. <laughs> I mean, it was really crazy. Like, this is the last person I've ever would have thought of because she is such a loyal person. And she had been in that office, the same office for 19 years. That's a long yeah. time. You know, and she was commuting like I had been before the lab also. So we live really rural. And she was driving like an hour and 20 minutes one way. Wow. That's for 19 way. years, you drove an yeah. hour. That is crazy. such a long way, y'all. You know, so now wow. she's since moved after coming on board with us, too. And so she would live like 25 minutes away from the yeah. lab yeah. when she came on board. 
now she lives like uh half a mile i was gonna say five minutes (laughs) not even that is so ideal it's so crazy so now you know we both lost that hour plus commute and we have a less than you know two minute commute to work so when you interviewed with jill i'm assuming you there was a formal interview and everything or did you know you just knew when you saw the resume (laughs) you're like all right you're you're going you're here really she honestly came by the lab, and I was like, you just need to come by and see it. She was off on Fridays. So what did you think working and in this closet? Yeah. Were you like, oh, I'm game for <laughs> this? I was a little nervous. I would be, too. <laughs> a little nervous. And you know how loud it is. Like, I made sure oh, the yeah. compressors were running and the mills were going yeah, that you day when she came by. Yeah. yeah. By the way, we both can't turn around at the same time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do in the lab? So how do you guys communicate facilitate what's what's your role i do like scanning in models design and i love to stain and glaze that's probably my favorite so you taught her all of that in how many years two wow that's impressive so you're not just admin you're a tech you're in there you're getting your hands dirty huh that's so cool oh yeah she i mean she came on board and aaron's one of those people that just has such a good work ethic number one and she wants That's to be proud. Oh, yeah. oh, my That's gosh. I agree. I mean, I think she's <laughs> called in sick to work once, and that's because she, I sent her home after she came. <laughs> I was like, nope, you're going home. Like, I don't want to be around you. Yeah. You know, and, and outside of that, just her pride and what she does shows through in everything that she puts her hands on. And so I, it was very easy for me to be comfortable to teach, delegate, and let go. Yeah. You know, because, I I mean, granted, we quality control everything. And I'm the last person to touch anything that goes out. And Do you you have to touch everything? Only because it comforts her. Like a molar, it's very rare I do anything to those. You know, we do a model free. But do you fake it so she thinks that you are? I mean, I look (laughs) at it, you know. But, but, I mean, it's very rare that I I ever have to really go back behind her. Um, I would say on her anterior designs even right now, she's. I mean, she's at 90 percent, you know, I come back in and do maybe 10 percent touch up. And I mean, she's just she's been a rock star. And I mean, I tell everybody all the time, I'm so blessed. And I know she's a godsend. And did you ever answer to literally a prayer? (laughs) Did you ever think you'd be a dental technician? No, probably didn't even know what that was. Right. (laughs) No, I had no idea. Like when I went in, I was like, you have to understand, like. I know nothing. She would say these words, the <laughs> occlusal table and the mesial, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Can you oh, show the front me, of the tooth? <laughs> yeah, front, and she's back, like, right, left. We don't, we don't call it that. Yeah, it's, yeah. And she would use all the correct words just about every time to teach Make me. Get it in yeah, there. and sure. yep. watch YouTube. Do these videos. Yep. And it was so helpful. Aww. Did you send her to Isn't training? It? We well we she sounds like oh, she's training we, every we day. We missed oh. that part. We missed this part. Yeah, this is a big one. So her first day was March first of twenty twenty. COVID Ooh. March first. Oh my god. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks yeah. in, Bad she's like, news. I just got a thing that the labs are shutting down. Yeah. Like dentist. Ugh. I mean, it was crazy. I was sitting there looking at my first full time employee that I lo- I loved her as a person, you know, because I knew her. I knew she had three kids at home. I knew sh- her Ugh. spouse had agreed with her making this major career change. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah by okay, the way. we'll figure this out. <laughs> you know, so training was very hard to come by yeah. at that point. You know, obviously there were no in-person trainings happening at all. And so yeah. she learned everything on the job. And this is the Whitmix Forum is her first official oh, dental conference yeah. outside of Ladies of the Mill. I was going to say, yeah, Ladies You're of the Mill. You're not getting out of the park. Yeah. 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 For you. So she's. This do you has feel been like you fit one. in? Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. You understand the words they're saying on stage. I do. Yeah, that's half the battle. Yeah. <laughs> and two years, that's a lot of knowledge, lady. Just saying. It you is. I'm really proud, proud of, of yourself. Her. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> but yeah, our story's been kind of crazy. And I mean, she's just been one of those people that she. To work with me is a challenge. Like I, I, can, the, I can imagine. I'll be the first to tell anybody. Why do you say that? <laughs> because I am constantly thinking. Yeah. You know, it is, it's never just right now. A personality. It's it's constant. She's the type of person that you come into work and she's like, hey, why don't you run home and change? Because we're doing drywall today. <laughs> 
That's a true story. That sounds Legit. like reality. I was just going to say, that's something that happened. <laughs> it did. I mean, we we couldn't finish the lab because we were halfway through building. My husband was my builder. Yeah. And COVID hit. Well, I had no money coming in, so he had to go build for people that would actually pay him. Sure. You know, so we could eat. And so we sat there and looked at it for so long, just wishing it would be done. And finally, I was like, Aaron, like, we got to do it. So we did the drywall. We <laughs> like we literally mudded, sanded, taped the drywall the in our entire place. And wow, you Your know I mean, that is you did so a good impressive. Job or does he did he show you it? how to do it, or so did you just Google it? it is, we we did Google it. Like we YouTube did. <laughs> no, we did. We YouTube YouTube a lot. <laughs> I mean, I spent so much money at Lowe's buying tools that I will never touch for the rest of my life. That is so But epic. that's how we it. had to finish. And, you know, so that's why I say it's a challenge to work with me. I mean, you never know. And I'm, I'm very much a, we can, we can figure it out. Like, let's go do let's this. Do it. Let's figure it out. And successful. She just rolls with that. And mm -hmm. how, I don't know, but she does amazing at it. That's cool. So I know earlier you did just a lot of single units, a lot of posterior. That was like your bread and butter. But online, I'm seeing you do a lot of full arches. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. getting to that next step. I mean, that was that's huge. And I think you're doing this all on your own, obviously. You're figuring it out. How do you figure it out? Like, do you go to courses? YouTube? Or Oh. You too. Like, damn, <laughs> that is so true, though. It's really crazy. Disagree. Like, I, th I think that sometimes when I say that, people very much discredit my ability or, you know, question if I don't um, respect the industry enough, right? But that's what I had available to me. Yeah. We live super rural. Yeah. Like, I live in the middle of nowhere. And so we use the resources available. And so we grew very organically. Like you said, we started with single posterior sure. units. That was it. And that was it. Like, there were no exceptions to those rules. But, you know, as we grew, we just, okay, we, we're good with that. Let's do two units. Okay, we're good with that. Let's do a bridge, you know. We're good yeah. with that. Let's move to the anterior, you know. And, and it's just evolved to this thing now where it's like, if it stays in your mouth, we'll do it. <laughs> I mean, like, that's really my answer whenever outside of metal. Unless it's milled gold, i yeah. not touching Ditto. metal. But, but let's uh, remind the listeners, yeah. you never worked at another lab. No, I never made And that's where most lab owners or get their knowledge. They they figure yes. out, they they learn how to do it working in another lab then they go yeah. open up their own they already know how you don't. No. You didn't. I had never made a crown 4 years ago, a permanent restoration. I had made temporaries chair side with acrylic. Yeah. You know, but never a permanent restoration. Yeah, you come from the clinical assistant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Isn't that yeah. nuts? You say your rule, <laughs> how do you get your clients? Instagram. Really? Instagram and that's Facebook great. and just you know, I mean, I wouldn't really even say we've picked up a lot of s clients on, like, the speaker circuit or anything because my speaker circuit's always been with labs. Two labs, yeah. yeah. You know, so that's not really been it. But um, just word of mouth and referral and just, that's awesome. I don't know, we try to do a good job and, you know, try to treat people Still right. Still just you two? We have one part-time employee that works with us a couple of days a week after school. So she's actually a high school student Aww. that we're, you know, training up. And then we have a Another you part time. Into the life of of course. I know, right? <laughs> that's where that's, we all learned. That's it. where Except we you, we got to get them early. I know, you got that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we have a, a pr uh, another part time that starts with this November first, and she'll be working two full days a week in the lab with us. And so she's not ten years old, and kind of in that space in her life where she's like, I don't Gotta know what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And she tried this one path, and she's like, I don't want to do that. And I was like, Well, she's another girl that goes to church with me, and. I'm like, well, come on and work with us for a little while. You know, we'll let you figure out some stuff while you're here. As so. a business owner, how do you figure out you need another person? Like, or do you get oh. to where you're just like, I have got way too much I work. don't wait till I'm waving that white flag. Good. I, I'm a big believer in hire before you need it. I feel like if you wait till you need it, you're, you're incapable screwed. of training yeah. Yeah. accurately. And it's, it's not stressed. fair for your patient in the end, but it's not fair for the teammate that you're bringing on, promising in this great place to work where you're so overwhelmed that you can't give them that you know so always hire before needed like yeah. fully believe in so that aaron are, are you teaching the new employees some stuff yeah yeah oh yeah that says a lot <laughs> two years knowing nothing but you learn so much more when you teach it's like you relearn everything and you just get better and better and better it's just i i find that anyways, you know, there's, there's like, truth wow, to that i actually know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I do feel like it helped build her confidence to watch her teach someone else. And yeah. then it helps me to hear how she's 
teaching someone helps me to really understand where I still might need to help her with some verbiage or give her some more depth or a why behind something when if she might struggle to explain the why yeah. it yeah. means i've just shown her the steps yeah. That's you know great. so but man watching her learn I, it was just it was really cool to watch her teach it's fun <laughs> that's great two part timers what's next what what is it called oak oaks oaks dental just designs. oaks yep. i always want to say like oaks. oak tree or well, something like oaks. that was good oaks yeah, yeah. dental designs yes yeah, so. named after a big tree yes right? i do remember that, that yeah. totally yeah yep. yep. The massive tree on our property, and yeah. I mean, it's just been our staple, and it's a big part of my life, you know. So that's who we are. Um, what's next? <laughs> Other than you speaking a hundred times a year, <laughs> we do have a few coming up, which I love. I mean, I know you love it. You're good at it. You gosh. should keep doing it. But it seems like every Thank time you. I'm online, it's this is Jill speaking here. And I'm like, jeez. <laughs> I am enjoying it, and I mean, I, I love to see other people just be excited about what they're doing again, you know, and get refreshed or re-energized or realize that there's another option out there or whatever, you know, so it's fun to help do that. And it's tiring sometimes. You guys know what it's like being on the road and being away from family and stuff, but it's that email that you get a week later, a month later, six months later. That's like, this totally changed my life. You know, just that reminder that that's what you need to do. But I mean, Aaron knows that we've got some stuff in the works for the lab. That's like way bigger than where I thought I would, be and like holding other avenues and it's crazy but we're still kind of where we can't talk about it yet oh, come i know on. That's we really right. are but it's all right yeah. but it's we'll something i'm back on. really really excited about well, when, yeah when you do do it 100 percent. let's come back on and talk about all 100%. the exciting things and so yeah so when is ladies at the mill next year so always the I'm gonna go. third yes i yeah, know yes. are you no. are you so yes um, it'll always be the third uh, weekend in July. In July. So okay. we always try so to keep I'm it not that going same on weekend. Put it on your calendar I will. right now. I'm telling you. Yeah. Booked. I'm such a loser. But we don't know where it <laughs> you is. You are not. Right? Not yet. No. Bum, bum, bum. Dun, 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 dun. Not yeah. yet. But we have, we've we given ourselves to December somewhere? 1st. Oh. Bahamas is yeah. one place we're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Fiji. Fiji. Uh, you know. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> just saying, Hawaii. Hey, that's that's the bucket list one. You like, know? I'm thinking like our five year, five year anniversary, plan. like the five year ladies anniversary of, the of Ladies cruise. of the Mill. A cruise, that's Ladies of the Mill cool. cruise. Mm-hmm. We got there a lot go. of things. Kid that Rock did that, and it was super awesome. Thank you. Kid about. Rock did a Ladies of the Mill cruise. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> weren't yes. you there? Apparently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I missed that show. That's why we weren't in Chicago <laughs> this year. <laughs> Christy and I both, we really want our five year to be just something really cool. It should And be so too, we yes. do have, seriously, we're talking about Caribbean or something and just how fun it would be to just do something different. It's amazing that you can be on year three already talking about what are you going to do for five. I mean, that just yeah. says a lot. She said she's a thinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's I way mean. ahead of herself, which is important. Most Visionary. shows these days are just trying to make it to the next year. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are like, nah, what are we going to do in the decade? Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's awesome. But, I mean, there's just been such a support in the industry, and I think there's this stigma around who we are and what we stand for, and, you know, and that's fine. I mean, you're, it's always going to be there. There's nothing I can say or do to try to change saying. it. Yeah. You know, but I, I think it just speaks volumes that our male vendors that come, like, they're ready to come back again. And it's not because they're there with a room full of women and, oh, that's so fun. You know, no, it's because what we provide is, like, a, a really good quality weekend yeah that is full of things that challenge us to be better leaders and better teachers and better examples for other people to follow and yep. you know it just challenges us to be better people in general and, and so men are invited yes. to be attendees yes, yes. 100 percent. i understand what where that disconnect <laughs> is i don't get it i mean we it's hosted know. by ladies of the mill like yes. that's the thing like we host it so we supply the um, the speakers, it's no different than DS World. It's DS World, right? Yeah. Well, we're ladies of the mill, and we are putting it on. You're always going to have female speakers on the stage, but that's something that we try to do. It's just kind of our thing. But I'm telling you, there's some killer, amazing female speakers that have really good things to share. Sure. Yeah. You know, so, and it's just a it's just a different vibe. But, yeah, men are always welcome. I mean, 100%. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think there are any in attendance. You we were had there. Two in attendance this year. I was. Are you not considering a vendor. yourself a vendor? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was with Creed. <laughs> I was still a vendor. But you did yeah. have two attend. Yeah, we had oh. two attend this year. So, and um, you know, it's it's one of those things that I think, again, it's the fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. You know, and so it. 
But it's a different show than anything you'll ever go to. And that I can assure you. Like I 100% can promise that. And it's a welcome difference. Yeah. All these shows, they kind of have that same theme, the CE credit, talking about your technique and your whatnot. You don't do that. And that's it's it's a welcome change. Thanks. I think it's good. Yeah. Thanks. Congratulations, by the way. Ladies. Yeah. Awesome. Super way to rock it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> way to rock it. Jill, Aaron, thank you so much. Yeah, thank oh my you. Gosh, Appreciate yes. it. Yes. Thank you all for having Safe us. Safe travels back. And I love her leather pants. Just say. Oh, thanks. I wasn't going to bring them up. Oh, I will. <laughs> I'm a leather girl. I love them. Really? Yes. I don't think I own They're a single beautiful. piece of clothing that's leather. <laughs> Maybe I have some right, with me you can borrow. Right. What's that? I have some with me if you want to try them on or borrow. Yeah. Okay, it's let's turn this off. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, we are at Whipmix Digital Forum 2022. What's it, Saturday? 2022. Saturday morning. Yes. We are joined by Todd Hyduck. Hi. Hi. Zest. It's back. Good. Let's see. What did we figure out? Episode, Episode 70. 70. 70, yeah. That's that was a long time ago. A very long time ago. You got to get back on. And we did that from the f- uh, the phone. We were I know. Yeah. This is much better. This is totally better. <laughs> <laughs> and we're joined by Dr. Michael Shear. Hey. How are you, sir? I'm doing just fine. Thank you both for inviting me. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So where are you out of? Yeah, so um, I I have a clinical practice in Northern California, so about two hours east of the San Francisco Bay Area, so literally in the middle of nowhere in (laughs) California, because you know how it is, how it is in California. People think, oh, you have a clinical practice in California, so therefore you live in Hollywood and you you treat celebrities, or you live in Northern California and you've got a home right underneath the Redwoods, and I'm like, well, Mm. no, neither of those, those are both beautiful, (laughs) Um, but uh, but I'm I'm in a I'm in the Sierra, so I'm about 45 minutes away from Yosemite. National Park. Oh, so sweet. I've been a, there. Oh, it's awesome it. it's out beautiful, there. It's beautiful. Yeah. It? We're a rural practice. There's only like maybe 7,000 people in my small town. So really? Yeah, super small. So I know you're pretty well known. You're out there. You're speaking a lot. I assumed you had a big practice in a big city. Not true. Not true. Well, the, the first part's true. My practice is quite busy and quite okay. big. Okay. So, you know, we're in a small area, but because of what I do and the digital stuff that I do, I draw from six hours away. Really? So, you know, a part of what I've done in my practice, I noticed there was a trend where I was treating patients that didn't want to necessarily come into the office very often. And I was almost kind of pressured to go into the digital route or at least trying to maximize the, the you know, digital dentistry period uh, just because the, the patients were coming from so far or yeah. they're living up the hill and they're living in a cabin. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we draw from a, a, a sizable area, but you know, I even have some patients who come in from San Francisco wow. to, to get their treatment. Yeah. Awesome. Really? Mm-hmm. So w- when you say you were into the digital, what was your first parlay into it, if you will. Was it the scanners? Yeah, Barbara, thank you. That's Sarek. A- Sarek. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I graduated dental school, that was the only system. Sure. Elvis, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was Sarek. And that's a wonderful system, arguably still the best, if not one of the best digital systems out there. Um, but it was very expensive. Yeah. And so when I first purchased my practice about nine years ago, I was like a lot of young dentists out there or even young technicians where it's like you want to stay you know, humble and nimble. I yeah. don't want to spend too much money on technology. So, you know, I, I was able to scrap some money together for a scanner, just like a 3M true definition really? scanner. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because you asked Barbara, says, well, how, well, tell me, what do you mean by digital? I said, well, I've always grown up being kind of a computer nerd. And to tell you the truth, you both, I really am just, I feel, a very clinically okay dentist. Like, I hate to admit <laughs> that. Like, you know, thankfully... People don't drive six hours for okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's not a humble brag, not at all. It, it's it's very serious because I, I, I'm not a cosmetic dentist. Yeah. Um, in my area, my number one shade, you'll never believe this. A2. No. C3. Elvis, what, oh, you're close. That's number three, Barbara. What do you think, Elvis? D4. Oh, you. Okay. So very <laughs> few people actually get that close. It's actually D3. Really? Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> Have you, you checked your lighting? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Elvis, I mean, the funny thing is, is D3 is actually a beautiful shade, and my favorite shade in all of dentistry is D2. Hmm. Like, especially for aesthetics, it's beautiful. It just looks warm. It's hilarious. I don't think real. I've ever had somebody mention their favorite shade. Really? I do a lot of BL2s. Is oh, that crazy. your favorite? No, I think it's too bright, but that's what What we... is your favorite shade? 
I don't know, probably a B1 or a BL4 yeah. with some translucency and a little bit and of... yours is D2. D2, I all the it. way. Maybe a little bit of incisal translucency, too, to maybe yeah. really even drop you know, drop the value yeah. even a little yeah. bit. So I'm going to check that out on Monday. I'm going to be like, all right. My favorite shade D2. is Folgers. <laughs> what does that mean? Coffee stain. <laughs> <laughs> that went well over my head. It's early. Yeah, so um, I heard you're lecturing later. What is your lecture about? Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Well, here here at the Whitmix uh, Digital Forum, it's really awesome because Whitmix is such a wonderful classic company. Oh, uh, sure. And they're well known for analog you know, dentistry, and in many ways, uh, they're pushing hard in the digital scope because we all know in dentistry, especially you all in the technical world, it, almost everything is not you know is touched by digital. Yeah, I mean, pretty oh, much. Yeah. W- what can't we do, or w- are we still doing analog these days? But the answer is arguably yes. So, you know, here at the program, we're covering an update number one on digital full arch. And then updated uh, hands-on on on how we approach di- digital overdentures mm. and then, um, a new fixed full arch system as well. Uh, but the key is is, is that in my takeaway message is I, I don't believe there's a one hundred percent or there's nobody that's a one hundred percent digital dental office or Not yet. nobody yeah, that's a one hundred percent digital technical office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if you look at some of the super large labs, there's still human beings involved to design or oh, sure. to move parts and pieces yeah. around yeah yeah so you're talking about over dentures mm-hmm. you must be using the locator that's why todd's here the <laughs> zest guy mm-hmm. yep so how are you involved with the discussion and the hands-on i'm really here to support just support just support yep. he's he's going to be giving some great content uh great education to to the folks who are attending and i'm going to be there to support from pretty much a manual basis yep. and showing how to, you know, do all the parts and pieces mm-hmm. and the hands-on portion of it. So we have a lot of uh, attendees for this, which is great. So yeah, it's huge. I'm, I'm going to put my roller skates on and uh, just go be flying sh- around the room. Yeah. You guys have enough sample models? For yeah. Everybody? I was just going to say, how do you do that? Do you get the models prepared or do you send them off or what, how do you put it together? A 68 person, you know, Barbara, hands-on course. It's crazy. Great question. I'm really blessed, you know, with my position at Zest. Um, and then also my team at Zest, that they can really move mountains. And, you know, the education of what Zest brings to the table is is amazing. So in, in addition to that, I, I also help because I in my dental practice, I have a full lab. I have mm. a lab technician that works side by side with me in my practice. So we will print a bunch of things for, for hands-on courses, things of that nature. So it is not unlike um, a lot of our courses for me to come in with, you know, my, my carry-on luggage. Yeah. And getting through TSA with oh, 70 yeah. Models. What it's the hell exciting. are these? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not too much of an issue because uh, I guess you know it's uh, they're used to that. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I guess maybe there's a lot of dentists that quirky are little things like yeah. models. I've had it happen once when I was traveling through and I had a lot of sample models and I I know I had the locator model the RTX mm-hmm. and the guy opened it up and he looked he goes. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, uh, Elvis, I, I think we can all agree that in dentistry, we just kind of embrace we are just one a of those. A little quirky. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So whether whether your shade is, is XL2 <laughs> or BL2 <laughs> with this or, you know, a D4. Yeah. yeah. Is that your favorite, yeah, Elvis? Is that what it is? It is now. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, something the I didn't out. know. You're official on the podcast saying that. Nice. Uh, but you know, here at the here at the forum, uh, we are um, also looking at bringing together those digital and analog workflows because mm-hmm. t- to get us to bridge between being as much 100% digital as possible, we need an analog component for now until really the technology matures. And when we're talking specifically about you know full arch cases and overdentures, you know you really can't border mold with a digital scanner. No, and so you do need PVS really for that. Um, mm-hmm. However, when we start talking full arch fixed, which you would think it would be harder to do with technology, it's actually easier to do with yeah. optical scanning, photogrammetry, things of those natures. So what we've done at Zest is, is we've brought out also a new concept called the locator fixed, yes, which mm-hmm. is taking the original locator abutment and now allowing you to go ahead and do a fixed bridge on it. But the reason why I bring that up, too, is, is because it uses the same clinical and technician workflows as the original locator system, wow. it just now allows you to do fixed just by changing the housing. I mean, it doesn't look different, right? Yeah. I mean, really, all you're doing is changing that insert. 
correct. You're changing the well, the abutment is the exact same. So yeah. the original locator abutment, all the analogs, all the parts and pieces you would use in the laboratory, the exact same. What is different is the inserts and the housings. Mm -hmm. So to make it really fixed, where it there's no movement and it the patient cannot remove it, it does not dislodge. Uh, Zest had to, to re-engineer uh, the interface of yeah. the insert oh. to the housing to get it to work. Interesting. Yeah. So awesome. what's usually the workflow? Someone's already in a denture that has locators. They want to go fixed. Chairside pickup? Absolutely. So there's three main primary workflows. You take your existing overdenture patients, mm -hmm. drill out or trefine out the housings, yep. the removable, do a chair side pickup, same prosthesis, cha chair side pickup of the new fixed housings, and then you cut the flanges back. Hmm. So you don't want to deliver this um, locator fix with a denture with the flanges. Yeah, that's what my concern was. When I first saw this product, I was like, ugh, who's going to not cut off that flange? And now we're going to have really bad hygiene issues. Hmm. You know, so it, it is definitely only indicated for fix. So you want to design your prosthetics and for your, your technicians, you know, tuning into this program, you want to design your prosthetics fairly equivalent or identical to what you would do for all on X. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. So convex surfaces as much as possible yeah, to help with, um, with help, help with food displacement. Elvis is an implant guy, obviously. So <laughs> <laughs> he knows a little bit more about it than I do. How does the locator get into the digital workflow? Hmm. As far as I know, you have those little caps that you can scan, but all that does is give you a recess area. Is there any more that we can do to get locator into the overdenture, into the digital workflow? Yeah, absolutely. So currently, the locator scan bodies create the recess, the That's space. That's all that it does, to, yeah. To do the chair side pickup. However, we are actively in development working with all the companies yeah. to create a true scan body alignment workflow. Hmm. And it's a little bit more challenging just because... Most scan body workflows rely upon having to do a, f a screw retain restoration in mm -hmm. the softwares. Yeah. So it's asking these companies to reprogram their software. Mm -hmm. Think so differently. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's taking some time, but it is active development right now for sure. Are we going to be looking at a custom locator at any point? Or are we going to stay with the stock cuff heights? Cuff heights. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of sounds like uh, <laughs> something that we would talk about here at the, you know, Kentucky Derby. And I mean, you know, with those fancy hats. And yeah. Stuff. Oh, oh, yeah. Those are, oh, no, those are cuff links. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason why, and this is a question, there's two questions that Zest gets asked on a regular basis is, um, you know, why don't you have an angled locator and why don't you have a custom locator? And and the, an the, the real succinct answer to that is because you don't need it. True. So Zest keeps things simple. The locator abutment is one piece because that's just easy to place. When you have angled components, then you have to have different positions and yeah. then it's hard to line up the angles. And then on top of it, you know, when a locator abutment loses the little retentive parts of the geometry of the locator abutment, you lose a lot of your retention and stability. Mm -hmm. So by doing a custom, quote, custom locator, there's no such thing as a custom locator. Sure. It doesn't exist. So there's people that make copycats of it, yeah. but it doesn't function like a real locator. So the answer to that is, this is that when you change the angle at the housing, that's the answer. Mm. So if you have your traditional locator abutments, you can angle correct up to 20 degrees mm -hmm. with your standard inserts or up to 40 degrees with your extended range. Mm. So then if you have cases that are beyond 40 range, and you say, well, oh gosh, what should I do? There's the locator RTX, yeah. which you can correct up to 60 degrees of angle correction. Mm. And if you need more than 60 degrees of, of angle correction... You need to be doing something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> um, in those situations, maybe consider like a bar over Sure, denture, of course. You know. But you can still put locators on. <laughs> you can. Yeah. So I've got a question for you, Todd. Yes. You were talking about your new education center yes. that you guys are building. Can you kind of... Tell us a little bit about that. Where is it? When is it? So we've been doing um, a lot of education out of Las Vegas and to the point where we decided to build a, a facility of our own, uh, which will be opening up in the beginning of next year. Awesome. Uh, so um, we are pretty much trying to meet the demand of the education that's being asked from the dental community for 
implant overdentures, full arch, fixed restorations. So next year, we pretty much have every weekend booked. Wow. Already? So it's clinical, well, When correct? I say booked on the calendar, so yeah. uh, not booked by attendees. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, but still. Uh, but in, and Dr. Shear has been pretty instrumental with that and, and his team uh, to get that off the ground. And um, it's I, I really feel it's just going to be a game changer for us as well as the, the dental community because mm-hmm. – that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for different types of education. And uh, we have an amazing group of KOLs and various other speakers that are going to help support these um, education events. So is it mostly clinical? So is it geared toward dentists? Uh, geared towards dentists. Uh, we do still also have a fair amount of dental technicians that, that will can join be, the be, dentist be a part of that yeah. as well because they want to learn. Yeah. They want to learn more of the clinical side of it as well because that's going to help them on, on the oh, technical yeah. side. Big time. And what the expectations are. Awesome. Will you be teaching how to do a chairside pickup? Yes. Good, because that's we, what it, you run into it all the time. We, we, Dentists we, don't want to do it. <laughs> They're scared of it. They don't want to touch it. You ask them to do it, and they give you a look like you've just asked them to. We always teach the chair side. Even when clinicians are utilizing laboratories where they feel that they're getting reproducible results with their records and having the labs, you know, process it for them, uh, they still also want to learn and should learn how to do a chair side just in case. Yeah. So that's a. That's so are you, is it like a live patient on some of it or how do you even? Well, we do it on models. Okay. And, yeah. Awesome. Dr. Shear, does your lab tech have to make all the models for these courses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's going to be kept quite busy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, you does know, he just roll his eyes <laughs> when you hear about another course? Like, <laughs> ugh. Gosh, you know, it's interesting, Elvis, because, you know, he's he's now, he's in quasi-retirement mode, so he's been oh, okay, 40 yeah. years on the bench, yeah. uh, CDT, and I'm a big fan of CDT, and when he came to my practice, he, you know, he doesn't really know the difference between the left and right mouse click button, Yeah, uh, but yeah. man, that guy can wax up a denture, like, <laughs> whoa, it is really good. So it's been fun to, to help him along the journey, because we even do a lot of zirconia in our practice, you know, both on traditional screw retain and also on the new locator fixed. Um, and he does not ha- know how to use porcelain until he came to my practice. And then he and I sat side by side just learning how to stack porcelain. And, That's awesome. And do Mio. And, I and love Mio. That's what I use. Fabulous. Uh, oh, yeah. My God. I agree. And, I mean, it even takes, like I mentioned earlier, just an okay dentist like me. And it, <laughs> these these restorations yeah. look good. You yeah. Know? But wait a minute. You said the locator fix can be done on zirconia? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh. So the locator fix system is not saying change anything. All it's saying is, is, is that you're going to use the locator abutment with a new housing Everything else is the same from the technical world. So you can use monolithic zirconia. You can use stacked zirconia. You can do cobalt chrome with denture teeth. You can do cobalt chrome with milled teeth. You can do Ivotion style prosthetics. You can do 3D printed prosthetics on Lucitone, Flexera, Nextend. You name it, what Zest does, what I've done in senior education is, you know, from the technical world, we want to be able to empower technicians to put their aesthetic stamp on things and yes. your mark. I love that. So what it comes signature. down to? Oh, the signature. Yep. That's exactly right, Barbara. You know, so long story short, if a technician wants to do zirconia and do something unique or a polymer-based restoration with, with zirconia or titanium with the sleeves, you can do that with locator fixed. Hmm. So how do you, is it just cement on the housing? Exactly. So you can... Process it, you mentioned the trouble is just learning how to process chair side. Trust me, I know. We have a lot of dentists that we've spent years educating how to pick up chair side. Locator fixed, you can also pick up chair side. Yeah. But then also, you know, uh, if if you and the technician feel you'd like to work on a model, you can certainly work on a model as well. Yeah. yeah. But that housing is just cemented in. Correct. So, you know, I typically recommend with zirconia that you use a resin-based cement. Yeah. Um, sandblasted, metal primer, uh, zirconia primer. Use whatever materials you like um, and then adapt it to locator fixed. Now, when you're doing denture teeth or PMMA or titanium, you want to sandblast those surfaces. Yep. You can use a metal primer, sure, but you don't have to. Just sandblast it and then you can pick up using a chair side attachment processing material. Are the housings for the fix bigger than the traditional housing? Is there more surface area for the cement to grab onto? or? Yeah, Elvis, that's a great question too. So the size is about the same. So maybe okay. about a tenth of a millimeter different. Bigger? It's the geometry on the exterior surface. Okay. So you mentioned that it's how is it going to retain in there? The original locator housing is kind of smooth, mm-hmm. is not very 
grabby for fixed restoration. So a part of the redesign, too, of the housing was to make it more retentive yep. and bigger undercuts and, and kind of a sharper okay, surface. Sure, so that yeah. way the cement will hold. Nice. Yep. Nice. And what color is this new insert? It's a gold color. Gold. So you're you can, running out of colors. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the nice, it's a, it's a, has a nice gold hue about it, but also then you can differentiate between the other. Um, sure. The other parts. I would hate there. to do a removable denture and actually s- accidentally slip in the gold and nah. be like, you're going to wear this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so how do patients remove it? How does it come out? We have an insertion and removal tool. Okay. Similar to the one for the FTX? So it's it's a redesigned version of that. Yeah. So it would look like a kind of a, like almost like a crown remover type yep. of device. But with two different tips, uh, one tip is to help uh, place and f- do the final insertion of the prosthesis, and the other one is like a um, a, w- uh, a braided wire yeah. loop. And so what you're going to end up doing is you're going to uh, loop that around the distal extension of the prosthesis, and just kind of pull the, the pull it a little taut, and then when you squeeze the handle a couple times, it's going to give enough force at that specific unit to disengage the insert from the abutment. Yes, and, sir. and then you work your way around the prosthesis and to, uh, to remove it at each unit. The great thing about it is it takes about 10, maybe 15 seconds wow. to remove the prosthesis oh, really? from the patient's wow. mouth. And it takes about, I would say, between 30 to 45 seconds, definitely under a minute, to do a final insertion um, of the prosthesis as well. Once you take it out, can you reuse those same inserts and put it back, or do you have to replace them? So you would replace them. So, yes. like, after you remove it once, you kind of mess with the retention? Yeah, so yeah. The, 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 you know, the, the logic behind it is once you remove it, you just want a fresh new insert because of what, what we're asking that insert to do sure. to, yeah. to as, a, as a fixed restoration. Makes sense. Um, even the ones at the table, you know, we had the one model here, and we, we took it on and off like 20 times. But still, once we finally seed it, and I give it to That's this one know, right one here, the clinicians, right? yes. Yeah, I remember I was they pulling on this thing yesterday. Yeah. This thing's not coming in. Yeah. You know how strong I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. There it goes. Oh, there they are. But these are green. Yes, yes. Those are, yeah, so the colors are different of the new inserts versus the, the colors of the locator um, so removable. The, the housing is gold. Um, the but housing the is gold. inserts are green, the, tan, and blue. Yeah. So there's different locator fixed insert retention levels? Am so I understanding that right? The answer to that is, is, is historically Zest has always been known for locator of having light, medium, and heavy. Absolutely. Yeah. And with locator fixed, it's not that way. It's not just a retentive value of the pull strength. It's how the, the insert is really fitting to the housings itself. So what we're saying is, is is there are four implant cases, which is the green inserts. So if you're doing an all on four or all on X with four implants, Mm. it's green. And then if you're doing five or more, you're going to use tans and blues. Interesting. So it's, it's a little different thinking, but yes, you could make an argument. Oh, is it retention strength? Not really, but that's a fair analogy of of what it is. Yeah, because you have more implants, you kind of want a little bit lesser retention because got so much am i understanding that right? that's a good way to think about yeah. it. it as as mentioned it's the engineering of the how the actual insert to housing interface joins together yep. um, so if you made them incredibly tight strong not you know any sort of interface um gap junction whatever uh, it, you're not gonna be able to get the thing off yeah Ever. so the, yeah. <laughs> the prosthesis is is funny it, it's a bit of a paradigm shift with full arch because it's actually easy to insert, um, but hard to remove So without the tool. So if you use the tool, it's easy to remove, but patients can't remove them. So, And, and it, it's fair to seem skeptical of it, but this is a product that we've already had in the clinical space now for about almost a year. So I've treated a number of patients. We have some of our insiders and, and, and our key opinion leaders that have treated 10, 15 arches each. Sure. Um, and we have yet to have a single issue with a patient prematurely dislodging it. So oh. the reality is, is, is that the performance is extremely, extremely positive. So, you know, and that's a, a, one of those things because the natural in, inclination is to say, oh, it's a snap-on. So mm-hmm. what happens if the go- patient goes down um, and they go have some ribs and bite down hard on something? Is it going to pop off? 
And and the answer is we have not seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, what I love about it is you already have so many patients with locators. I mean, it's like 90% overdentures as locators, let's mm -hmm. be honest. Now they have an easy option without a whole lot of multi-units and changing things. And, I mean, you're already easily converting patients, and there's no screw access holes. That's huge. It's, it's you know, Elvis, I, I'll put it to you this way. Um, I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more. <laughs> Not cowbells. Overdentures. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely Christopher Walken of the overdenture yeah. world. <laughs> I love so, it. So, I mean, uh, overdentures, it, it, here's the thing is, is sometimes, especially in dentistry, we tend to get really wrapped up in the super fancy side of it. That's why a little bit of tongue-in-cheek earlier talking sure. about, you know, shades. Um, my practice is very, very blue collar, older practice. And I've got a lot of patients that can't necessarily afford $30,000 an arch. Yeah. yeah. And like you're saying, yeah. you know, we also want to empower clinicians that have their signatures or want to put their signature on things. So if we have a clinician that wants to do a super high end on locator fixed, you can, you know, ideally it's meant also for those clinicians that have the patients that say, well, I can't reach 30,000 but maybe I can do twelve to fourteen thousand. Hmm. But are saying no to implants because they don't want, they don't want a denture. Yeah, they don't want to yeah. snap it on, snap it yeah. off, and yeah. and for everybody. It's else. definitely a mentality that they want it fixed. Correct. I mean, they, I don't want to take it out, and I don't want it in the glass like Grandpa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's a real thing. Like I've got some patients who actually have said, "Oh my God, I, I went to Grandma's house and I saw her teeth in a jar, in a jar. on the oh, nightstand, yeah. and it freaked <laughs> them out." Yeah. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> It freaks me out a little bit too, and I'm in it all the time. Yeah. I mean, let's be. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me take put my teeth back in. Yeah, no, please. I don't know if you guys see it, but too, but um, but in the clinical space, my favorite is is, is when the patient comes in and I say, "Well, did you? W w where's your lower?" And you know, it's in their pocket. Yeah, oh, have you guys ever that seen really that? happens. Yeah. No, but I'm talking about literally, like they're like, "I'm like, did you bring your venture with you?" And they go, "Oh, hold on, doc." Oh. They're checking their pocket. Okay, and, and for folks listening on the podcast, I'm like diving yeah. into my pocket yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, wait, no, it's not in that pocket. And then yeah. they find it. It's in their shirt pocket. But then they pull out their phone. And then they pull out their keys. Oh, and then their denture is in there. And then oh, they just go. And then they pop oh. it in. Blow off the lens. <laughs> Stick it in. That's exactly how it happens. Yeah. That's really a thing. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. Can you do these on the traditional lower two? Locator? Uh, it's minimum of four. You got to have four. Yeah. Because yeah. you're looking for that cross art stabilization. Sure. Okay, so mm -hmm. toss in two more implants and you're good to go. That's why it's important that you know when we educate the clinicians about just doing two implant or they're thinking about three implant locator cases is if you know in the future that you could potentially do more for that patient, you should, you should. place two but plan for four. Yeah. <laughs> so the spacing is going to be ideal. So Dr. Shear is like has been really big on that in the education about making sure that you, you're going to put those two in there. Don't just put them in a certain way just for two implant restoration plan plan, the whole plan it so you yeah. can yeah. get two more and you're later on in the future because your ap spread and everything still holds true for this is also so okay. correct yeah. everything yes just, just like dr sure mentioned is everything that you think about with traditional screw retain fixed full arch all the principles and everything still remain the same from your ap spread to uh, the expectation of the different materials that you're using the only difference here is that you're using locator that everyone's familiar oh, with, yeah. with a different type of housing that and, and insert that allow it to be fixed. Hmm. So just imagine just, just what everybody knows without any screws and without any access holes. And you know, Elvis, to take that even just a step further, because I know there's it's the natural reaction to think, well, is this going to replace my screw retain cases? And what I love to do in my lab industry or, or in my lab practice? And the answer is no. The intention is not to, to take a single patient out of screw retain. Because you asked about AP spread. You know, one of the limitations of locator fixed is, is you can't go beyond one-to-one -one AP spread. Really? So it's recommended not to, to go beyond one-to-one. -one. Hmm. And in some patients that are Bruxers, you want to limit that to a half yeah. times AP spread. So if you get a case in your laboratory and it's, it's all implants in the front and the patient wants... You know, four posterior yeah. teeth because, doctor, I paid for four <laughs> yeah, back yeah, teeth. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, um, <laughs> I'm paying you all this money. Uh, yeah. And so in those cases, you got to use screw retain. Yeah. Um, but it, this is really ideally meant to be that middle ground option for clinicians and technicians who just say, well, I can put in a short 
little implant in the molar position and maybe two or three in the anterior. I've got a five implant, maybe overdenture, but now I can do a fixed restoration on that same locator, but more importantly, in the same prosthetic space that you can do your overdenture cases, which is nine to 11 millimeters from the top yeah. of the implant. So, you know, if you have uh, a tight prosthetic space um, with screw retain in a long cantilever, it's going to be a riskier case for either screw retainer <laughs> locator fixed. But the general idea is, is, is that it's really meant for clinicians that can think outside the box a little bit to yeah. have that flexibility where they've got more implants, more implants. And, and even in my practice over the past 15 years, I've tried to eliminate cantilevers in general. Oh, yeah. Sure. I just don't like it. Yeah. But that being said, it can be used for every indication, but we want to recommend limiting the cantilever. No, that's some good points. I didn't realize it was the one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's thinking differently than what everyone's used to with the one and a half and mm -hmm. yeah can you do these with immediate load can you yes. do the multi-unit and then that locator that goes on the multi-unit and have the patient walk out De of day of surgery definitely with this? definitely because i would think that that conversion of that denture would be easier because you're not dealing with the screw access hole you're not dealing with picking up cylinders right you're just picking up a housing yeah, the, the pickup is going to be definitely easier yeah. chair side. But you can do it uh, with immediate function as long as you're following the same principles that you would with sure. any other case that applies to minimum of four implants. Your your uh, torque value yeah, of the yeah, implants yeah. Is, is where you Soft want it to diet, be. Soft diet, all that. Yeah, right. I love it. Yeah. Any difference of vertical clearance less than what you would need with a traditional screw-retained hybrid or anything? Yeah, absolutely. So so what's interesting about the locator fixed is you can do a, a, a fixed restoration in the same space that you can do a, a locator over oh. So So what is that, like 9 to 10 millimeters or something? Exactly. So yeah. nine, to, 9 to 10, 9 to 11 millimeters is the general recommendation for a locator over -denture. You can do a fixed restoration in that same prosthetic space. And That's pretty cool. The reason is, too, is this is without the screw channels and with the thickness of the restoration and, and kind of that minimizing that crack area, which usually starts at the screw channel, y you can uh, restore that fixed restoration. Yeah, what do they sense. recommend for a screw retain hybrid, like 15? Yep, 15 yeah. to 18. That's a big, that's a big difference. Well, think about it, you know, in your, in your, in your lab world, how many doctors actually give you 15 no. to 18 millimeters? Yeah, <laughs> that's a fair amount, I, right? I know one guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so it, it, that's the world that we live in, for yeah, sure. For sure. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thanks so much Thank for joining you. us. This Thank is you great. For you know, Elvis is geeking out. I am. A I'm sitting bit. over here. He's an implant guy. And I, I'm just I like, it. I'm enjoying it though. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Todd, Dr. Shear. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks for it. Good us. luck today. Great. Yeah. Thank great you. course. It was great to meet you. Yep. And I appreciate it too as well. Uh, you both are amazing and enjoy the, uh, listening to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank that. you. At least one doctor does. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. Thank you. Take care. Got a huge thanks to Jill. Aaron, Todd, and Dr. Schur for sitting down with us at the Whitmix Digital Forum. I mean, Elvis and I had such a good trip. Even though you were there earlier than you said you were going to go, we had some really, really great conversations. But talking to Jill and Aaron and hearing about their success running a lab in the middle of nowhere is super crazy. And my only regret is that we didn't get you in those leather pants. Elvis. Well, you would have looked good in them. I probably would have. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I have good calves. <laughs> and I got to say, as you know, implants is not my strongest specialty, but it was great learning all about the clinical side of the overdenture attachments. And it's exciting to talk to some people that have experienced using the new locator fixed attachments. So no more screw access hole. No more screw <laughs> I just say asses. Yes. <laughs> yes. So no more screw access holes is super exciting. So thanks again, everyone. And we are all really excited for next year's forum. And Elvis and I will be there and I'll be there a day early. So that <laughs> I get the conversations as well as you. Because I love the Whitmix Forum. Oh, my God. The Whitmix Forum is amazing. Awesome, everybody. We appreciate it. And we will talk to you next week. Have a good one. I said it before you can back to the lead. Bye. Where do people get these names? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. <laughs> All right. Hold on. <clears throat> All right, go. Take two. <laughs>